Okay, Sam, well, it's an absolute honour to have you joining us here at Barlet Town. Uh, and I tell you what, I really look forward to seeing what you can do on the pitch for us as well. Ah, uh, yeah, that's great, mate. I'm going to have to go. Uh, Duffit? Duffit, what's going on? Duffit! Riddy and Williams is a professional footballer? Oh, God, it must be the apocalypse. Is it too late for me to find Jesus? Hi guys, it's Mozzie and welcome to Season 4, Episode 7 of the Impossible Dream with Barlet Towns. We look for European glory with the Welsh team. And we have a lot to catch you up on, but nothing more shocking than the fact you may remember Riddy and Williams. We signed him Season 1. He was signing of the year somehow. Um, well, he's now a professional footballer. The only reason he's still at the club is because literally we couldn't get rid of him. Um, his contract was supposed to be up at the end of this season. Um, but he's now become a professional footballer. And the main reason for that... Uh, it's because we were using him. He was kind of third choice left and right back. And with so many games just continually coming this year with the Winter World Cup and, the, and sort of the gap in the calendar, I figured if he's going to be playing as many games as he is, um, and he's played six games already, one assist. He hasn't been shocking. He actually has been quite good, averaging 7.32, uh, lesser opposition, of course. Um, but I figured if he's going to be playing, let's get him on a professional contract. We don't want a Ridian Williams mistake to be the reason that we get knocked out of a cup game. So... For the sake of £60 a week, uh, we've done it. He's now an emergency backup, professional footballer, and yeah, the apocalypse is here, everybody. <laughs> Riddy Williams, professional footballer. But that is not even the beginnings of what we have to catch you up on, because we have three, three massive, massive signings to catch you up on. Uh, the first one is uh, Daniel Williams here. Uh, you may have seen the other names there. Uh, but the first is Daniel Williams here. We've signed him uh, 700, 700, 575 pounds a week. Uh, just a central midfielder. Really, really solid. Uh, now, what I like about him, apart from the fact he's just generally solid all, all around, um, he's a natural dropping back in to play as a, des as a defensive midfielder. We don't really have anybody that can do that other than Owen Taylor. And this guy is a three steps up on Owen Taylor, to be honest. So... Uh, that's a really, really good signing for us, I think. And he, he, he probably becomes instantly the best central midfielder at the club, to be honest. Um, well, you can see there. Good teamwork, vision and work rate. Passing's good, technique's good. Long shots are there. Um, he just pretty much has a little bit of everything. So I'm really, really happy with that. Uh, now, where do we get him from? He's on a free... All these are free transfers. He was released by Swansea. Uh, and he's played a couple of games already for us and done quite well. Next up, Sam Vokes. Welsh international Sam Vokes, 62 caps, 11 goals. He is now at Barla Town just till the end of the season. Uh, we managed to get him in as a regular starter. Nothing sort of more important than that. £450 a week. Um, just a good, solid, a good, solid player. Good teamwork. Um, you know, we kind of know what we get with Vokesy. Um, he, he was released by Stoke. Didn't really get a club for two... Yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't played a game for ages. He's played one game on Debu, one goal, one assist, which was quite nice. He does have staff, staff attributes. Um, to be honest, they're not great. Uh, he's good at working with youngsters, and I'm, I'm wondering if maybe it might be worth... Have we sent him on a coaching course? Yeah, I think we have tried... Or I think if we tried it, but we're, we're going to try and send him on a coaching course. Just see if maybe there is a decent youth coach in there somewhere. Um, but he's only here for the season, like I say, and we'll kind of see what we get out of him, but his debut was definitely promising, and we'll get to that in just a second. And the last one, Brandon Cooper, a centre-back. Now, we do have a lot of centre-backs at the club, um, but this guy, I thought, was just too good not to sign. Mentally, he's an absolute... I mean, he's as good as... Um, as uh, what's his face? He almost signed James Chester, almost. Physically, there's work to be done, but we can work on that in training. It's pace. It's sort of, it's just the pace side of things, really. But he's got all the basic defensive stats that you want. Excellent concentration as well. Um, so I think, again, 22, so he's young. Uh, so I think, again, a really good signing for us there. Again, released by Swansea. Um, and again, he's only ever played two games for them. So he'll be making a debut today. We'll see him in our first game. The way we're going to do this, we're going to play Kevin Druids in the league first game, just so we can have a look at some of the new guys. And then we're going to play Zen at St. Petersburg at home in the uh, Euro 2 Cup and just see what we can do against them. But that's everything to catch you up on, more or less. Uh, let me know what you think of the new signings. I think they're absolute stars. We have a lot of games to catch you up on here, though. Uh, let's start, though, with our game in the league against newly promoted Port Talbot Town. We took a first half lead when Backhill Benny played in Nebula. But we were forced to share the points thanks to a goal just after half time. Bit of a letdown this one, gotta be honest. Uh, Apgareth had a nightmare. Uh, we were the better team, um, but we just. 
Yeah, it's just a poor performance, really. Now, the coach of Port Talbot Town, which will be of interest to Bala fans out there, is Colin Kent, uh, Kat Catton, I think. Uh, of course, he has been Bala's manager pretty much forever, I think. Um, so that's his new club. So we, you know, we did him a favor and, uh, you know, being good hosts that we are, we let him take a point away from the game. But Nebula got the goal for us. Next up, we played Bangor City. The winning goal came just before half time. Bus and Brew pouncing on a poor back pass. Scrappy win basically describes this one, I think. Again, we did deserve it. Russ and Brew with the goal. Um, but yeah, not much to say about this one, to be honest. And we'll keep it uh, short and sweet because there is a lot of games to catch you up on. Next up, it was Iron Brew time against Kilmarnock Reserves. We fell behind as we were caught on the break. Ewan Dixon pounced on a rebound to quickly level things up. Before we found ourselves in front moments later, thanks to Newton. Olmark smashed in a third early in the second half. Before Jordan Garrick scrambled in a fourth late on. So a good win this one with some of the lesser spotted players uh, playing this one. Ridian Williams, you can see there. Owen Taylor at the back. Uh, Radcliffe got a game in goal. Jordan Jones in midfield as well. Garrick. Uh, and of course, All-Star Ormark up top. Um, we deserve to win this one. We did fall behind, but it was sort of one-way traffic after that. We've got Alawa, uh, Alawa Athletic in the quarterfinals. So that uh, looks to be a winnable tie for us as well. Next up, it was, I think it was Carnivore. I can't read my own writing, but I think it's Carnivore. Bus and Brew opened the scoring from the spot. And we doubled the lead early in the second half. Up Gareth nodding down for Bus and Brew to get his second. Kamal then pulled one back. But a goal mouse scramble finished by Henry Jones restored our lead. Up Gareth again played in Bruston Brew to complete his hat trick. And he headed in Nichols Cross for his fourth, a new club record for a league match. Carmarthen Town, of course it was Carmarthen Town. And look at this, Luke Bruston Brew. An absolute star was born. Four goals in a game in the league. That is a club record. It beats Michael Hayes' record previously of three. Um, so that was just really good stuff. And Gap Gareth, he is just the most intelligent footballer I think I've ever had on uh, on Football Manager. He just does the right things at the right time. And I think he just showed it there. An absolute star. But Bust and Brew was the hero in this one. Henry Jones got a goal as well. They somehow managed a goal from their two shots on target, which was frustrating. But it is what it is. Um, next up, we had another game against Port Talbot Town. We took the lead when Sam Bogues of Header induced a scramble with Neto tucking it home. But Bogues got his debut goal late on, played in by Nebula. Should have scored five or six in this one, to be honest, but we did get the job done. Neto pouncing on uh, Vokes' rebound, then Vokes late on did get his debut goal, um, which was good to see, to be honest. So there we go. Should have won by more, didn't, but we did get the three points. That is the main thing. We have a look at the league table. We are four points behind the New Saints with three games in hand, so we're still in a good position there. Um, obviously, the backlog of fixtures is going to take its toll on us at some point, so we want to be as close to them as possible. Um, you can see the other, other cups there. Out, away to Alloa Athletic in the Iron Brew Cup. Uh, we've got Denby coming up shortly in the Welsh League Cup quarterfinal as well. And, of course, the Euro Cup, um, Euro Cup table there as well with a big game coming up later this episode against Zenit. But let's not waste any more time. We are about to face Kefan Druids. There they are there, lower mid-table. Uh, we're about to play them in the league. Let's have a look at what we're expecting here. We are the favourites, as you would expect. Um, we can see they're a balanced passing playing style. Mark Robinson is the manager. Um, I'm not going to badmouth him before the game, but we can all see his attributes there, can't we? This is what we're expecting from them. They drew 1-1 last time out. Uh, passing, oh, sorry, positional heat map we can see there. Very, very central for the most part. Um, passing network and the key passes as well. If you can just about pick key passes, there's two of them there. Um, and this is the team that we're sending out. It is Redcliffe in goal. We're very much looking ahead to, uh, to Zenit in this one as well. If you do actually have a look at the schedule, um, we played Port Talbot Town on Saturday. This is Tuesday. We play Zenit on Thursday. So we've been rotating like mofos to try and get through this. So Redcliffe in goal. Ridian Williams, newly professional footballer, going to play at left back with Ed Evans, a debut for Cooper, and Denham at right back. 
He's not going to do much getting forward then. I'm from right back, to be honest. One and one, dribbling and crossing. Back heel, Benny and Gosse go in midfield. Serafino, Dixon and Jones in behind uh, Damian Ormark up top. We do have Sam Vokes on the bench. Unfortunately for this one, uh, new boy Denny Williams is match fatigued. He's been playing a lot lately. Uh, so we're not going to see him today, but we will hopefully see Vokes off the bench at some point. So there we go. Everybody is playing as expected. Now, I should quickly mention, too, we do have a new club record. And uh, after that result against Port Talbot Town, we are now 34 games unbeaten as a club in all competitions. Now, I expect that could very well end this episode against, um, against Zenit St. Petersburg. But as things stand right now, we're on a club record unbeaten run, 35 games. 34 games. Um, let's not get ahead of ourselves. If we were to avoid defeat here, it would be 35 games, of course. Um... But yeah, we'll just kind of see what we can do. As I said, we've played a lot of games. Uh, we've been rotating the squad almost constantly, it seems, or it has been constantly. Um, so it's 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 been difficult. We've really shown the, the depth in the squad, which is important. Um, yeah, so we're just kind of chugging along as best we can in the league right now. So I thought, I mean, it's a good opportunity to, not just to see new players, but kind of see how we do, we'll see some different players as well that we don't always get to see in Europe. Um, and then... I think there was two games in between this, this this Senate game and the next game in Europe. Uh, and the, the the last two group games are a little bit closer together. So I thought we might do those as as a double header as well. Here we go with Denham. He's one crossing. It's Henry Jones. A little bit behind him. So a difficult chance. But maybe one he should have done a, maybe a little bit better with as well. Let's go attacking now. We've got a throw. Denham throws it in for Dixon. Back for Denham. See what his one crossing is like. There it is. <laughs> Pretty much as expected. Denham. That's better. Just pass it back there for backhill Benny. What's he got for us? He goes back there for Cooper. Backhill Benny. Back for Coops. Gosse heads it down for Allmark. Nice ball there for Serafino. Can the hero of Turkey do it again? He can't. Oh, Allmark. That's shocking. Goal gaping. And Damien Allmark's hit the post. Warm up, Sam. You could be coming on shortly. <laughs> that's the finishing that we're going to get. Um, let's demand a little bit more here, please. Come on, boys. The sort of my basic plan with uh, with the rotation of the team is I'm trying to play the sort of the best fittest team I have available um, for me at all times. So I'm trying to make sure no players playing more than say twice in a week. Uh, you know when we're playing three times a week, I'm trying to avoid that. I'm, tr I'm favoring the league and Europe over the cups, um, but. I mean, it's it, when you're playing four games a week, it's pretty much, you know, who wants to play this one? Here we go with Allmark. It's not there, but Serafino. Oh, he's scoring for fun now. Fourth goal of the year for Francesco Serafino. Damien Allmark. I'm not sure he deserves an assist for that, I'll be honest. <laughs> he should have scored that himself. Uh, but somehow he's managed to get himself an assist. Goalkeeper parried it. Not the strongest hand. And it's just kind of deflected it into Serafino, pouncing at the back post for 1-0. And that is nicely done. Dan Evans, of course, is still unhappy at the club uh, right now. I'm thinking another reason why we bought Cooper in is obviously Evans is upset with me. Uh, what do we want to say? Probably don't get complacent. Evans is upset with me. Denham, let's face it, he's, he's not been great for us in Europe. So I'm wondering if maybe we need to just wash our hands of him. Um... And Cooper's a step up on all of them. So it was sort of an opportunity to bring in a, a better player that, you know, we can get rid of get rid of some of someone. What it would uh, perhaps allow us to do with... The problem with Dan Evans is that he's an under-19 player when we need to have two of them in the squad. And right now, at sort of first-team level, we really only have three because we have Allmark, we have Dixon, and then him. So it would make it really difficult. We'd have to go a man short on the bench or probably call up an under-19 goalkeeper, to be honest. Here we go, Serafino again. It's blocked away. Um, so ideally, I want to keep Evans at the club and try and get him happy again. But I'm wondering if it might just be worth second half of the year, sending him out on loan so to see if that makes him happy uh, and then waiting for him to start trusting me again. Here we go with Dixon. Dixon, that's ambitious. Or was it? Maybe it wasn't a shot. Maybe it was a sort of ball out there for Jones. Jones goes back for Riddy and Williams, professional footballer. Headed away. It's there for Gosset. Danny Gosset is off the post. Serafino. Oh, he's pouncing. He's pounced again. He's like Tigger. Go on, Serafino. Fifth goal of the year now for him, and he's on a hat trick. A nice confidence boosting goal in Europe last time out. And. I appreciate you all laughing at me, how happy I was. I was like a proud father when he scored, honestly. 
<laughs> but there we go, Serafino pounces. Fifth goal of the year for him. Are we finally going to start and see the best of Serafino? I tried so hard to sign him. It's almost since we first took over, he was the sort of the guy I was trying to sign. Um, I actually settled for Bussenbrew, believe it or not. You may remember, or oh, was it season one? I think it was. Um, and I think, uh, did we eventually get him? I think we eventually got him the summer of sort of in, season, in between season one and two. Good tackle there from Danny Gosset. Rolling back the years with that one. And then, of course, he broke his leg, didn't he? Almost instantly in the preseason. So, he's just not had a good time at Barla Town. And I really am happy to see him doing well for us. A little bit of... Uh, can we get a foot in here somewhere? Don't like the Druids having this much. There we go. Riddian Williams, professional footballer. Clears it down there for Ormark. Ormark goes back for backhill Benny. What's he got for us? Rolls one through there for Ormark. What's he going to do this time? It's there for Henry Jones. Is there a ball across maybe? Where's uh, Serafino on the hat trick? There he is. Serafino. Serafino for Dixon. Oh, it's unlucky. Where's Serafino pouncing? Can't quite get there on that occasion. Um, and you do just wonder if a third goal here. We're looking complacent, which I don't love. But you do wonder if a third goal here would just about see it done for us. That's an interesting way to take a free kick. Uh, of course, if they were to score here, despite the domination, suddenly it looks very, very nervy. And Radcliffe has had to make a big save there as he was offside, so it didn't matter. But a good save nonetheless. Radcliffe wouldn't have known he was offside at the time. Cooper's looked relatively solid on the boo, hasn't he? We've got 20 minutes to go. It might be a good opportunity, actually, to get Vokes on, play him up top instead of Ormark. Ball over the top. Can Ormark get a goal before he departs, I wonder? Ball back over the top. Ofori is there. He's through, and Radcliffe makes a... Nice save again. Uh, and that should give us a chance to make the sub. There we go. So Sam Vokes. Let me know what you think of uh, him as a signing. It is only for, till the end of the season right now. We can extend it if we want to. Oh, that well, was Dixon. I thought it would mean hooray for Dixon. I thought it was Cooper on the boo. But he must have. It's, it's, oh, it's Sam Vokes with the assist. So Cooper's name lit up. I thought he had tapped it in. What's happened here? It's Vokes with the head up. Cooper, oh, so he's headed it down into Cooper, and Dixon sort of rolled it across the line. That's what you get from Sam Vokes, though, in the penalty area, isn't it? I actually think Cooper's a little bit unlucky there not to have found himself with an assist. We've got a little bit of defensive work to do here. Ball comes in. Can we get that away? We can. Nicely done by Cooper. Ball, oh, I tell you what, that's a goal, isn't it? There's not much you can do about that. We may have just witnessed goal of the season for the Welsh Premier League. That was an absolute... Thunder bastard into the back of the net, wasn't it? It's definitely worth a second look. Headed away nicely by Cooper. Have we left him a little bit too much space? Possibly, but you don't expect that to happen, do you? Not at this level, not at any level, to be honest. Maybe if that was at Ronaldo's feet, you might think, oh, well, you've got to close him down, boys. He can do that. But <laughs> that boy is not Ronaldo, I would suggest. So here we go with Gosset for backhill Benny. Back for Gosset for backhill Benny for Gosset. For backhill Benny. Where's Gosset? He's in space, mate. Look for him. He goes back for Cooper instead. Cooper out there for Serafino. Still on a hat trick, of course, Serafino. Can he put some pressure on? They've gone long. It's not a down. Evans should get there. That he does. For Ridian Williams, professional footballer. That's not a professional pass, though, mate. You've got to be better than that now. Come on, you're training full time. There's the ball in behind. We might need to drop this line off. It's not the first time we've seen that. And another massive save there from Radcliffe. Let's just uh let's just drop that line a smidge, shall we? 10 minutes to go. What we don't want to happen here is go back to 3-2, because we've, we've seen ourselves blow leads before, not necessarily this season, but it's, we're not, it's not beyond us. Decent clearance there from Cooper, just couldn't quite find the team. It was a bit of a nothing, really, wasn't it? It wasn't really a pass, and it wasn't really good enough for a clearance. Radcliffe makes a save, and here we go. Is it Denny Gosset over a free kick? I think he's number 17, isn't he? It is Denny Gosset. Gosset. Oh, Denny Gosset. That is absolute class. He rolled back the years a couple of... Uh, the first half, wasn't it, with a tackle? And that is rolling back the years from the set piece. We saw that from him first season. That's stunning. Denny Gosset, take a bow, mate. Fifth goal this season. Professional football agrees with him, doesn't it? And that should just about see us through. Um, I won't make any more changes. These guys aren't going to be fit to go against, um, against Zenit anyway. So we'll leave the guys on the bench. We'll leave them there so we have fresh players for the bench uh, for Europe. Ridian Williams, professional footballer. Not quite there. Goes over the top again. We're not particularly defending well that ball over the top, are we? We've got away with one there. Ratcliffe gets his own rebound. And is that the highlight? Yes, it is. Final throws of the game. Is there going to be one last highlight? Ridian Williams, professional footballer over the ball. 
It's Jones for really Williams professional footballer. He goes over the top. There's a good ball for Sam Vokes. Can Vokes get himself a goal? No, not quite. Decent save. He's offside in any case. And that should do it, please, referee. 4-1 in the league. We continue to roll on. That'll put us a point back of the New Saints because I don't think they were playing. Well done, lads. That's a good win for us. And on we go. So it is now 35 games unbeaten. Cooper, I thought, looked quite solid on the boot. Just a few of those balls over the top perhaps we need to work on. Evans, just be happy, mate. Be happy you're playing football. It's really, It really annoys me that, you know, he's upset that he's not going out on low when he's playing in our first team. But anyway, Serafino, absolutely love your work, mate. Guys, wait right there. We're hosting Zenit St. Petersburg. They come to Wales right up next. Okay, welcome back. We are about to host Zenit St. Petersburg in the Europa Conference, isn't it? Group stages. Um, the other game, of course, is Maccabi Haifa at home to the Turkish team. Ideally, we, what we don't want, I don't think, is Maccabi Haifa to win that game. A draw suits us, I think, a little bit. The Turkish team, if someone has to win, I'd rather it be them. Because uh, we that kind of keeps things in our own hands a little bit. But if we can take anything from this game, A, it'll be a miracle, uh, and B, it will be very, very much appreciated because it would just keep the other two teams at bay, won't it? We don't really know what we're expecting from them too much, which is a little bit of a problem because, let's be honest, um, we're in a little bit tough here. Now, we're actually not expecting them to come out in the 4-4-2. We're expecting them to come out more in that sort of formation. But look at some of these names, will you? Uh, Druisi, um, Wilma Barrios, Malcolm, um, it's like, oh, maybe this it doesn't sound so good now, but trust me, there were some good names when I saw it before. Um, all right, let's go and have a look at what we're up against here, and this is what we're sending out to face with it. It is Gray in goal. It's Glennon Lewis. Williams is going to come in and play on the cover. Gosney is going to come into the first choice European defense. I think he's earned that chance, uh, and Bakari is going to go down the right. Obviously, Denham, we've dropped him to the bench. He's just he's cost us too many times in Europe and we're going to play Vieira as a ball winning midfielder just trying to be a bit of a destroyer in there Connor Parsons is going to play let's play him as a deep liar actually as a deep lying playmaker there then we've got Waite, Nebula and Buston Brew let's hope those three well let's hope all these 11 can have a really really good day because we're going to be at our very very best to get anything so there we go They've, they have come out uh, in that sort of more defensively minded setup um We'll just have to kind of wait and see how we how we can go here. Um, I mean, re we've been on a good run lately. I mean, we have been on a great run. Go out there and impress me, boys. I feel like that might be putting a little bit of pressure on them. Um, but really, it's, we've got nothing to lose. And we, I mean, we've got nothing to lose. We, it's a bit of a free hit, but in you know, realistically, I mean, it's Zenit St. Petersburg. I mean, they've given some of the very best teams in Europe uh, difficult difficult uh, times. So. Yeah, we'll just see how we go here. Uh, Gosney's picking himself up a booking. What we don't want is to go down to 10 men. That really does make it difficult there. Uh, I know it won't make for the best video. and I, I'm, I'm aware that the video is running a little bit long after part one there. But I think we would all agree a zero highlight game here wouldn't be a bad thing. And there we go. I opened my big mouth, didn't I? Come on, boys. Maccabee Haifa has taken the lead as well. That's not ideal. Can we get a foot in here? Mark up in the middle, please. Malcolm's there. Back for Kral. And it's straight into the hands of Mr. Gray. And is that the highlight? Or can we launch something on the break here? Rolls it out there for Lewis. Lewis goes across for Gosney. Big game for him, isn't it? He was the 18, maybe 19 at this point. Playing against Zenit St. Petersburg. And we would have put a bit of pressure on here. It looks like it's going to come straight back at us. Gosney with a good header. There we go, Vieira for Parsons. Back to Vieira. Vieira goes early. It's Nebula. Go on, Nebula. Go on, Nebula. Oh, it's there. Is it going? We can't get the rebound. Bust and Brew just couldn't quite get there. That's exciting, though, isn't it? A real, real chance for us. Come on, boys. Let's... Do we demand more? Gray with another goal kick. Look for your fullback over there, mate. He doesn't. He goes long. Bust and Brew with a knockdown. Just can't quite find Nebula to run onto it. It's 1-1 in the other game. That would be a good result for us. Can we win the header there? We can't. Can we get the knockdown? No, we can't. And it is arrowed into the top of the net. And we're 1-0 down. And Maccabee Hyfe has taken the lead just to rub a little bit of salt into that wound. Um, oh, that's annoying, isn't it? 30 minutes gone. Is there anything we could have done differently? Bakari's not the strongest in the air anyway. It's a good... I mean... At least they're scoring those sorts of goals against us. It's... It would be... It's... You know, it's not like we've we've made it easy for them there. They've just absolutely lathered one into the back of the net from distance. Uh, let's try exploit the middle. We've looked as though that's where most of our chances are going to come, isn't it? Bakari's looking a little bit sore. 
picked up a knock as well. We're looking anxious now. Boys, come on. It's okay. That's not too bad. 1-0 is not too bad. If we can keep goal difference intact here, that wouldn't be a bad thing either. Um, what do we want to say? Unlucky? I'm going to say unlucky. Wasn't the worst performance by any stretch of the imagination. Wow. James Waite is not having a great game. Let's see if we can maybe get a little bit more out of him. Bakari on a booking. He looks like he's had a bit of a kick in the shins. We do have Jake Nichols on the bench, and he's done okay for us in Europe so far, hasn't he? What I'm thinking we might do here is if we're still in the game with, say, 20 minutes to go, we might look to go to wingers and just see if that being more adventurous helps us. Maccabee Haifa was absolutely smashing the Turks, so we maybe have done well to get two points out of uh, Maccabee Haifa the way things are going. They're, yeah, they're absolutely destroying them now. Um... Can we go and get ourselves a goal here against against Zenit? Let's go. Let's uh, let's have a little bit more of a go for them, maybe. Um, let's just try that. It's not particularly working. We're in the game with 20 minutes to go, so let's go to wingers. Let's see what we can do. Uh, all right, so let's change the formation. Uh, not that one. This one. Um... All right, what I'll do is I'll make the changes and we'll come back and run you through them. Okay, so we've made a couple of subs. Jones and Serafino have come on for uh, Bust and Brew and Gosney. Uh, we've got rid of one of the bookings there. I just feel like Nebula is statistically a little bit better of a player than, than Bust and Brew. So we're going to go with him. He offers a little bit more of an all-round threat as well. Um, Bust and Brew is just not quite... He's more of a poacher in Europe, isn't he? He's not quite the dominating force that we've seen. Um, we've seen from him in uh, domestic football. We're going to look to exploit the flanks as well here. James Waite is still not having a great day out there. Um, all right, here we go. Here we go. Five minutes to play. Williams brings it forward. Out there for Parsons. For Waite. Come on, Waite. You've done nothing all game. Kenny, he's got a goal. Oh, almost shredded a pass. Lewis gives it there to Vieira. Vieira for Waite. Waite, can he do it this time? No, we just can't quite find that ball over the top, can we? Malcolm has gone past, I think that is, oh uh, no, it's gone past Vieira, where Gray with a big save. Um, having seen that, let's not exploit the flags. I think maybe we're looking for passes that aren't quite there. Um, let's get stuck in. And do we want to make a change where we go two up top with wingers? We could maybe take James Waite off. Bring Allmark on. That's a good claim there from Gray. Now, was that the highlights? Surely not. Can we get them on the break? No, we can't. Um, yeah, Waite's had an absolute nightmare. So let's do that. Allmark for Waite. Um, you know what we could maybe do, actually? Is we could, maybe, we could stick Nebula back there uh, as a Shadow Striker. Because he can do that role for us quite nicely. Uh, let's see more of the same from you today, please, Mr. Allmark. And is there something here for us late? Let's just, if we concede another goal now, then so be it. Um, so let's go all out, all out attack. No, no surrender. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily want to pass the ball any differently. Come on, boys, get creative. Is this it? Serafino with a corner. It's not the best. Can we get to, uh, have we left ourselves without a really good uh, corner taker there? 6-1, and Bakari's got himself sent off. 6-1. It wasn't Bakari, no, it was Vieira that got himself sent off. Well, we've come this far. We've got nothing to lose now. Let's just continue going for it. Uh, pitch. Why, why are we... Why are we? There we go. Malcolm over a free kick. That is just past the post. And... Bakari's now injured himself. So we're down to nine. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Good tackle there from Henry. I tell you what, if we do it with nine men, there will be a riot in this house of mine. There we go for Serafino. Can he do it again? Oh, he just doesn't have the pace, does he? Pressure, boys. Put pressure on. Come on. Can we nick it? We have. All marks nicked it. Oh, can we do it? It's Nebula. Oh, it's still there. Can we lay it back somewhere? It's no. Oh. Nine men, and we just don't know when we're beaten, do we? And they've cleared it into touch for a line-out. Come on. We're still pouring forward. Serafino with a throw. Quickly, mate. We're running out of time here. It's not the best. Is it going to... Nebula's kept it in, and he just can't quite continue doing it. And I tell you what. 
Not a bad effort that. Again, we've gone down to a little bit of a wonder strike. Uh, but you can only say unlucky, I think. That was a really good effort. Youthful Bala come unstuck. That is harsh. The Bakari injury is not too bad. Vieira is going to be banned for a game. That that happens. It's fine. Um, but there we go. Maccabee Haifa has absolutely spanked the Turks. What did it end up as? 6-1. to one. And it gets difficult now because they've got to play them again. We've got to play them again. And we've also got to play Zenit. But they've also got to play Zenit. So I think maybe the best scenario for us now, we need Zenit, don't we? Because look at Maccabee's goal difference. has just taken a real, real boost there. We need Zenit to beat Maccabee in the next game. We need to beat Kempasa so that we would go to eight points. Zenit would be on eight points. Sorry, then it would then be qualified. Maccabee would be on six. And then we just need to hope on the final day. It's, it's just a reminder of last year that when we play a Russian team, the bottom team of the group can do us a favor. But that's, that's all for next time, guys. If you have enjoyed that, please do hit thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. And we will be back next time for Kempasa at home. And then it will hopefully all come down to Zenit away. We don't think we're going to get anything. It's, it's, it's last season all over again, isn't it? Oh, it's so exciting. Guys, I'll see you tomorrow for that. I've been Aussie Bill. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.